Hello, you little criminals. This is Grace from Whodunit Mysteries. Thank you so much for your interest in Teas for Terror, a Regency mystery game with a murderous twist. This game has two different versions. One is a seven player game and one is a nine player game. Each character is female. So that should be noted. <laughs> I know that sometimes it can be scary to purchase something online when you just really don't know what it is that you're gonna get. So I'm here to give you a quick run through about what you will be able to download when you purchase the game. I will go over the hosting packet and one of the character packets. Most of this game can be done completely digitally. Email the character parts to your friends that you're inviting and they can just read it on their phones or on their iPad or they can print it off themselves if they're more comfortable with that. There are only a couple pieces that must be printed. So let's do it. No matter what game of ours you buy, they'll each contain some basic pieces that require printing if you choose to use them. There is note paper so people can take notes, name tags that can be printed as is or on an Avery name tag, voting cards so people can vote on the criminal and nominate people for awards, and then the awards. The only other part in the hosting packet that must be printed is memory jogger number two. For gameplay, it does need to be printed single-sided, and before the game, you'll want to cut them out along the little dotted lines and have them ready to be distributed at the appropriate time. The remainder of the hosting packet gives you a guide on how the game should be run. This includes how and when to assign players, a general outline of how a whodunit mystery game normally runs. But Tea is for Terror has some variations from the general format of a whodunit mystery game. So anytime there is a variation from the norm, there is a little warning sign that will that will direct you to go to the adjustments section, which we will show later on in this video. There is also a link to a T is for Terror Pinterest board. We have already done the research to find decorations and food ideas for you, so you don't have to worry about that. The hosting packet provides a description of each character's unique traits so that you can assign the character parts to the people you think could embody those characters' traits. And then we have the party day adjustment. So steps six, seven, and eight need to be adjusted. So these are the things that are unique to the hosting packet. After that, the packet gives you some documents that are included in the character packets as well. So we've got the cast of characters, this story, the rules, and then some more note cards. At the very end is a section called the show must go on. This is to be read at the very end after the vote and after the criminal reveal. And this is just a little tidbit that lets you know what happens to each character at the end of the game. So that is what's in the hosting packet. The character packet contains many of the same documents, such as the rules, the cast of characters, the storyline. There's also a unique backstory for the individual character with reasons why they may be the criminal and clues to why other people may be the criminal. At the end of the backstory, it gives personality and acting tips, a link to the Pinterest page, so they can get ideas for costuming also. And then there is a question to ask to in order to get the game started if, if there's a little bit of a, a slow start. Most of the characters in this game have received threatening notes. So if your character received a threatening note, there is a copy of the note. After that note, there is a stop sign. 
saying do not read past this before the game. And then once the host tells you that you can read past it, there is a memory jogger, the very first memory jogger. And that is what is in a character packet. All right, so I hope that answers some of your questions about T is for Terror, and I hope you have a good time playing it. If you've made it this far, I hope you don't mind indulging me with a little bit of editorializing about Tease for Terror. This is one of my favorite games and it holds a really special place in my heart. It is, I think maybe the first game I ever wrote. And just like my dad wrote these games for me to play as a teenager, I wrote this game for my daughter for her 14th birthday. And so it's really special to me. I hope you have fun and have a wonderful day. Thanks.